What's up, Epi Bio Penguins? Today we're going to do 2022 number four, reproductive isolation and evolution. Existing isolated brook trout populations in Newfoundland, Canada, were once part of a large population that was fragmented at the end of the most recent glaciation period about 10 to 12,000 years ago. Researchers investigated 14 naturally separated stream populations of brook trout. They found that populations are all genetically distinct and show differences in morphology. So part A wants us to describe the pre barrier that results in these genetically distinct populations. Well, pre makes us think of before, and zygotic makes us think of a zygote. So this is a barrier that's going to inhibit fertilization, um, and so it's going to inhibit reproduction. And so since we know that these are in separated stream populations, I know they're in different streams. So there's some type of geographical barrier. And then because of the geographical barrier, there's some type of um, reduction of gene flow or inhibiting of the gene flow, and that led to them being genetically distinct. So geographic isolation prevents gene flow between populations. Student says habitat geographic isolation. They live in separate areas so they do not meet and mate. So no gene flow occurs and they become genetically distinct over time. Part B, it says that brook trout with larger, longer fins are able to swim faster than brook trout with shorter fins. In one of the Newfoundland streams, the main prey of the brook trout evolved to move faster. For brook trout living in this stream, explain the difference in fitness between the longer finned individuals and the shorter finned individuals. Well, real quick, we need to make up sure that we understand something. The predator is what's going to consume, and the prey is what's being consumed. So the predator is going to eat the prey. Um, my students did have a little bit of trouble with that one. Uh, so it's saying that our prey moves faster. So the individual that's going to be able to get the most food is going to be the brook trout that has the longer fins that is able to swim faster. Because if it can swim faster, it can get more food, and then it can have more offspring, and those offspring can also survive leaving more offspring. So we can see an increase in that uh, fitness. So individuals with longer fins are more likely to capture prey and reproduce. Student says longer fin trout can move faster and more easily catch their fast moving prey than shorter fin trout. So they have more fitness because they are better adapted to survive and reproduce in this environment because they have a more accessible food supply. So part B, I'm sorry, part C says if two morphological and behaviorally distinct populations of brook trout remain isolated for many generations, predict the likely impact of both populations. Well, if they're behaviorally distinct and morphologically distinct, they're not going to mate with one another. And so they're going to end up diverging into different species. So we'll see two different species um, averge, um, so speciation. Or we'll talk about that the two populations can continue to diverge behaviorally, morphologically, and genetically um, that would inhibit their future reproduction. So the uh, student said they will become separated species. Speciation will occur because there is no gene flow between the populations, so the differences will become more pronounced until they can no longer interbreed and are classified as separate species. Part D says researchers claim that there is more genetically difference between any two current brook trout populations than there are between any single current population. And the ancestral brook trout population from which all the trout descended provide reasoning to justify this claim. So they're saying that we have these two trout here, okay, and there's a diversion point, and they diverged and went into two different ways. There's more genetic differences than there is between any of these trout and the ancestor species. So the reason that we're saying that is due to mutations. Once they've diverged, they're going to be under independent uh, species, I'm sorry, uh, reproduction. And so there's going to be mutations occurring in each of these individual lineages. So there's going to be more mutations in there than there is between the ancestral species and any one given organism. So each population has accumulated mutations, experienced genetic drift. The mutations in each population accumulated are likely to differ. Or the allele production and the genetic drift selection by local conditions as a result in a collection of alleles unique to each population. So a student says they're all descended from the same common ancestor. So most of the alleles in the pools ex uh, accepting recent mutations come from that ancestor. They slip from each other as the frequency of alleles change based on their environments and the niches they need to fill. There are more differences from each other than their ancestor. From when they received almost all their traits and natural selection act to remove different alleles from gene pools of different populations, cause them to differ greatly from each other and, on, uh, and only slightly from their ancestors. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, 85 Payne was just success by all.